did your parents think of this? You go off to England for boarding school and then you go to Cambridge and now you're just, you're going to be a writer. My father, rather anguished, in a rather anguished voice when I told him I wanted to be a writer, said, what will I tell my friends? <laughs> Salman Rushdie, what's your drink? Uh, it's a vodka tonic, I'm happy to say. Excellent, I've done the same. Cheers, virtual cheers. cheers. Yeah. Virtual <laughs> cheers, exactly. Cheers at the tower. All right. I love having an excuse to drink a vodka tonic any day. Yeah, especially at this time of day. That's right, it's <laughs> 11 in the morning and we're having vodka tonics. It's all right. Um, writers can do that, can't they? They can, although I think there's writers who say that alcohol helps them, like, you know, Hemingway used to say it. And, yes. Uh, I don't believe it because yeah. my, I find if I have like half a glass of white wine, the day is gone. Salman Rushdie, you are the author of more than 20 books, novels. You're a literary great. What got you here? How did you get here? You know, I had a pretty rocky start is the truth. You know, um, uh, I mean, when I left uh, university, when I left Cambridge, which was in the impossibly distant time of 1968, writing was what I wanted to try and do. But unlike many of my contemporaries who had a kind of rocket-like start, who like in their early 20s were already writing wonderful things, um, I wasn't. in India and then moved to England for boarding school as a teen. You studied history in college. You worked in advertising. I couldn't believe you were doing like commercials for hair color for women. I was indeed. And then you're moonlighting as a writer? Is that how it happened? In those days, I think much more in those days than now, you could get kind of part-time jobs in the creative bits of advertising. What did your parents think of this. You go off to England for boarding school and then you go to Cambridge and now you're just, you're going to be a writer. Yeah. I mean, well, well, they didn't, they weren't very happy. So I mean, my, my father rather anguished in a rather anguished voice when I told him I wanted to be a writer said, what will I tell my friends? Oh, <laughs> oh no. And mercifully he lived long enough for the success of Midnight's Children to make him feel that maybe it wasn't completely a stupid idea because his friends started calling him and, and congratulating him. And, and then, you know, then he took the credit. Midnight's Children was the, se the second published book, but the first one which came out in 1975 was kind of universally scorned. And I had to recover from that. And then it took me, you know, getting on for six years, uh, and a lot of false starts and abandoned projects and this and that, you know. So, so by the time Midnight Children came out, which was in the spring of 1981, you know, I'd been trying to be a writer for 12 or 13 years you know, with, with, with diminishing optimism. Did you think about giving up? Yes, I was very depressed. But it taught me something, that failure. It taught me to to do the thing which we're always told, which is to write what you know. You wrote the Satanic Verses. I think this is probably what a lot of people know about when, when you say the name Salman Rushdie, people think Satanic Verses, they think of the fatwa. First of all, to explain for people who don't know, this was essentially a death threat, right? This From the is, government this, of Iran, yes. From the Ayatollah of Iran. Um, you had to hide for, what, a decade? Well, sort of nine years of difficult time, although it, it was, wasn't was all exactly the same. It got yeah. gradually better. I've always thought that the word hiding is very inexact because one of the things anyone who's ever been surrounded by maximum security knows is that it's unbelievably visible. Hmm. <laughs> hiding in plain sight. There's all these people. And also what I feel about that book now is that I'm really glad that people are finally being able to read it as a novel, you know, rather than as a political hot potato. What happens to novels? There are people who love it. There are people who don't like it. There are people who sort of like it. You know, it's this. Uh, that's the ordinary life of a book. You know? sure. and, and, and for a long now time... It's just, now it's just a book. 
does it bother you that people know you because of yeah. the fatwa that was on you? And, and do, do you wish that didn't define? Yes, I do. You know, I would wish to be defined by my work. You know, I mean that, that, that I mean the reason why I've ended up writing twenty books is is because that's what you hope people will see. They'll see this shelf of books. You know, they'll see it's like like from here to here, it's me. As I say, I'm happy with the passage of time because that's that's sort of right. beginning to be the case again. For a lot of young people, that's a very, very long time ago. You know, 1989. Oh, absolutely. And in fact, I discovered in talking about, you know, preparing for today and talking to you, some people don't remember the fatwa because they weren't born, but they remember you on Curb Your Enthusiasm talking about it. Yeah. This musical, it's about me, right? Yes. So, I mean, I'm interested. Who, who, who have you got playing me? That's right. So, I mean, I think they're, they're obviously the power of television is the power of television. And and and, uh, and being on Larry David's show was, I mean, first of all, it was just two of the most enjoyable days of my life. Biggest misconception about writers that they work all the time. <laughs> Best advice you ever got. Don't write until you can hear the people speak. Worst advice you ever got. Stop. <laughs> Stop writing. <laughs> I, got, I got that advice from my first, somebody wrote a review of my first book, which said that I should really look for another line of work. Oh. <laughs> I didn't take uh, it. Salman Rushdie, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you, it's been a delight. Yeah. We do remove cheers for me. Exactly. There we are. Virtual cheers. <laughs>